In this lesson, we will discuss those trigonometric identities which could be easily deduced from fundamental law of trigonometry and also show you logical way to remember them. The first trigonometric identity which we would like to prove is cos of, so first law is cos of pi by 2 plus alpha is equal to minus sin alpha. And if you remember the fundamental law of trigonometry that says cos of alpha plus beta is equal to cos alpha cos beta minus sin alpha sin beta. So this is one of those six fundamental trigonometric identities which we have proved in the previous lesson sine beta and comparing with what is required put alpha is equal to put alpha is equal to pi by 2 and beta is equal to alpha so let's replace this and this fundamental law will become cos of pi by 2 plus alpha equal to cos of pi by 2 cos of alpha minus sine of pi by 2 sine of pi by 2 into sine of alpha. We know that cos of pi by 2 is equal to 0 therefore 0 time cos alpha minus sine of pi by 2 is 1 into sine of alpha so this is equal to minus sine alpha. So this is proved. Cos of pi by 2 plus alpha. And if you want to prove second identity, which is cos of pi by 2 minus alpha, remember that pi by 2 minus alpha is an angle in the first quadrant while pi by 2 plus alpha is angle in the second quadrant. In second quadrant the value of cos is negative in the first quadrant the value of cos is positive. So that will help you to remember what is the answer for cos of pi by 2 minus alpha. So let's expand this using the same formula. This is cos of pi by 2 cos of alpha plus sine of pi by 2 sine of pi by 2 sine of alpha. So here cos of pi by 2 is again equal to 0, 0 into cos of alpha plus 1 into sine of alpha. So this will be equal to sine alpha. And similarly if we want to prove for sine. So we will be just using the different formula sine of pi by 2 plus alpha. Sine of pi by 2 plus alpha can be expanded using sine alpha plus beta. That will be equal to sine of pi by 2 cos alpha plus cos pi by 2 sine alpha. And similarly, if you substitute the value of sine pi by 2 is equal to 1 into cos of alpha plus cos of pi by 2 is 0, 0 time sine alpha. So this is equal to cos alpha. Again, you see whenever odd multiple of pi by 2 is added or subtracted in the angle of sine or cos, sine changes to cos cos changes to sine. So let's go to fourth one and that would be sine of pi by 2 minus alpha. Remember sine of pi by 2 minus alpha here the angle is in the first quadrant so for sure its value must be positive and because pi by 2 is being added or subtracted so sine must change to cos. But let's prove this that this 
sine of pi by 2 minus alpha is equal to cos alpha using the same sine alpha minus beta formula. So this would be sine of pi by 2 cos alpha minus cos pi by 2 cos pi by 2 into sine alpha and sine pi by 2 is 1 times cos alpha minus cos pi by 2 value 0 into sine of alpha so this is equal to cos alpha and similarly you can prove you can prove similarly you can prove similarly that if you have tan of pi by 2 plus alpha that would be equal to minus cotangent of alpha and if you have tan of pi by 2 minus alpha that will be equal to cotangent of alpha and vice versa because secant of pi by 2 secant is reciprocal trigonometric ratio for cos secant pi by 2 plus alpha is equal to minus cosecant alpha and secant pi by 2 minus alpha is equal to cosecant alpha secant changes into cosecant cosecant changes into secant tan into cot cot into tan so the other trigonometric ratios can be similarly defined so this is i hope you have understood the behavior of these trigonometric ratios when it comes to theta is equal to pi by 2 while crossing that line now let's discuss theta is equal to pi theta is equal to pi so at theta is equal to pi if we want to prove sine of theta plus pi now theta plus pi is an angle in the third quadrant and in third quadrant sine is negative and it doesn't change the ratio whether you subtract or add pi ratio will never change sine will stay sine cos will stay cos tan will stay tan so in third quadrant because theta plus pi is third quadrant angle and sine is negative there so my good guess is the that the answer would be equal to minus sine theta let's see by expansion of sine of alpha plus beta so this would be sine of theta cos pi plus cos theta sine pi so what is the value for sine theta into cos pi is minus 1 plus cos theta into sine pi is 0 therefore the answer would be equal to minus sine theta that's exactly what I said that if you add or subtract pi sine will stay sine cos will stay cos so let's even try sine of pi minus theta so let's see this is now the second quadrant angle because you are subtracting theta from pi so it's falling back into the second quadrant and the value of sine is positive therefore the answer must be positive so my good guess would be that this will be equal to sine theta so but let's expand using sine of alpha minus beta so this is sine of pi into cos of theta minus cos of pi sine of theta so if you do that this sine pi is equal to 0 0 into cos theta minus cos pi the answer is minus 1 into sine theta and here you can see minus into minus 1 will become positive and the answer will be equal to sine 
theta. And similarly, if you want to prove these results for cos, cos of theta plus pi, that's third quadrant angle, and in third quadrant cos is positive, uh, negative, and cos will not change its ratio, therefore, it must be equal to minus cos theta. But let's see. Expand it by using cos of alpha plus beta, so this would be cos theta cos of pi minus sine theta sine pi. And now if we substitute the values, cos theta time minus 1 minus sine theta into 0. So this will be equal to minus cos theta. Now if we want to calculate cos of pi minus theta, cos of pi minus theta. So this is the angle in second quadrant and in second quadrant cos is negative therefore it must be equal to cos of uh, minus cos of theta let's see expand by using cos of alpha minus beta so this is cos of pi cos of theta plus sine of pi into sine of theta Put the values cos of pi is minus 1 into cos of theta minus sine pi is 0 times sine theta. This is equal to minus cos theta. You can see it's easy to find out these values. You can simply follow this rule and you will know what the result you should expect. Addition, so note one adding or subtracting adding or subtracting subtracting pi by two are odd multiples of pi by two are two n plus one pi by two for n is equal to 1, uh, 0, 1, 2, and so on. Cos changes to sine. Cos changes to sine. Sine changes to cos. Tan will change to cot. Cot will change to tan and secant will change to cosecant cosecant will change to secant so this is for changing the trigonometric ratios and if you are subtracting or adding even multiple of pi by 2 and similarly by adding by adding or subtracting multiples of pi or even multiples of pi by 2 that's one and the same thing even multiples of pi by 2 means n pi for n is equal to 1, 2, 3 and so on. Trigonometric ratio doesn't change trig ratio no metric ratio does not change
so in that case sine stays sine cos stays cos sine stays sine cos stays cos so that will help you to understand when the trigonometric ratio will change from sine to cos cos to sine or it will stay the same the value of and the number two things is that observe observe which quadrant which quadrant the angle is in the angle is in and then using the rule cost then using the cast rule decide the sign the sign positive or negative and before we end this lesson the rule of cost is that in fourth quadrant C stands for cos and it means that cos and its reciprocal secant are positive in fourth quadrant everything else is negative in first quadrant means from when the angle is theta is equal to 0 to theta is equal to pi by 2 when the angle is between this or in multiples of 2 pi if the, your angle falls into the first quadrant they're all sine cos tan are all positive in second third in second quadrant sine and its reciprocal cosecant are positive everything else is negative in third quadrant from theta is equal to pi to theta is equal to 3 pi by 2 tan and its reciprocal are positive everything else is negative